Today I'm going to show you how to build your own battery packs for your power tools for dirt dirt cheap. And you don't need any specialty tools like battery spot welders or anything else like that. You can do this all in your own garage. Costs virtually nothing. Let me show you. So the number one cost in building your own battery packs is the cells themselves. You'll quickly find if you actually go and buy cells, it actually is virtually always cheaper just to buy the whole battery pack from the manufacturer. So we have to cut costs somewhere and the easiest way to do that is to salvage cells from old battery packs. This one right here had, I don't remember, 20 cells in it or something like that. This one had 20 cells, they're right here. And generally when these go bad, it's actually only one cell or two cells or maybe four cells that go bad and everything else in there is still a great cell with tons of life left. So we can take thrown away battery packs, salvage the cells, and build our own battery packs for the tools that we actually have and use. Today we're actually going to be building a uh, nine cell Milwaukee M12, but it's the same if you're building, you know, a DeWalt 20 volt, a Makita 18 volt, or even a Milwaukee 18 volt battery pack. Let's do it. So I'll tell you the end where I actually find packs like this all the time, but how do we go through these and now find out which cells are good and which cells are bad? Generally, in a pack, it's only one cell or a set of two. It generally, what I find is actually wrong with them. Here's a Ryobi. I actually just got this today out of the garbage. And we'll just throw a voltmeter on each one. You know, completely full should be about 4.14. Uh, completely dead, they should be around three, two and a half. This one's probably going to be really low. This cell, first cell. 1.83, that's really low, that will come back. The second cell is 1.1, that will probably come back. 0.89, so about one volt, that one will come back. This one, 0.46, not gonna come back probably. And 0.46. These two cells right here are probably my, my bad cells, and these three are good. So I can get three cells out of this little teeny pack. Um, same with this, just go through this. This pack right here is what we're using today. This had 14 cells in series. That means it had 14 cells back to back to back to back, just in a straight row, positive, negative, positive, negative, to make up the 56 volts. And out of all those, there was just one cell, bad, right in the middle, took that out. All the other cells test good. How do I test the cells besides just measuring the voltage? Is I have just a super cheap, battery 18650 universal anything battery charger i think it even charges like nicads and i just put that in there and if it takes a charge and goes up to charge and then if i leave it for a week or so and i come back and i measure it and if it's around four volts this one's 4.16 and it's been sitting probably actually about two weeks yeah that's a great cell 4.1617 great cell great cell so all these are great cells so let's make a battery pack okay so it's off the internet and you can buy battery cases with circuit boards for dirt cheap i think i paid around nine dollars took about three weeks from china but nine dollars for this battery case for this nine cell battery case so typically this is a milwaukee m12 is 12 volts and to get 12 volts it's just three batteries back to back to back like this right here, this is just three cells and they're actually just back to back to back and then they're just kind of bent around with the tabs connecting them. But we're gonna do a nine cell. And what that does is that piggybacks an extra two sets of cells. And so you have three cells here, three cells here, three cells here. So these three are connected, these three are connected, those three are connected. This would be a, a 3P, 3S. So three in parallel, three in series and you buy this whole case, comes with all the pieces you need. So we can build a battery pack for around nine bucks. A These are 2000 milliamps. So once you add, you know, three together and three in a row, it ends up being a 6000 milliamp 12 volt battery pack. Um, so pretty straightforward. Let's just dive into it. We got all the parts to put it together. And it's as simple as just soldering everything together. Yes, soldering. We don't need to spot weld anything. Now you can see that I still have some of the old tab left in there. Not a big deal. I actually like to cut it first and then peel them off afterwards. Because if you're not careful, sometimes you can rip the bottom of the battery. It's only happened to me like once or so. But we'll just take these off. And then 
in order to make the solder stick, what we need to do is just sand it really fast, just scuff it up. Really nothing spectacular. And there's a little bit of a nipple for me pulling that off. I'm gonna just sand it down a little bit. I'm not sanding through the metal, I'm just sanding it down a, a teeny bit, scuffing it. Do that to all of them and we'll go from there. This battery pack is a little bit more complicated than most battery packs, so that's why I'm showing it. A typical battery pack with, you know, this would be like an 18 or 20 volt battery pack. You're just gonna have five cells, five cells, and everything's kind of open and easy just to work on and solder. This one has them, I have to group them in a set of three here, set of three here, and then a set of three underneath. Um, so these are going to have all the positive and negatives are going to touch. They're just, you know, they're just lining up side by side by side. And then we'll take this set of three and touch it to there. And this set of three, touch it to here. And then a positive will come off of this end. I'm to connect to your tool and the negative will come off this end. And you'll have a balance lead that comes to here and here that actually helps charge this set, charge this set, charge this set. And there you go. These are 2,000 milliamps, so I'm going to end up with 6,000 milliamp. If I had 3,000, I could end up with a 9,000 milliamp battery pack, and so on. But I'll show you soldering real fast. Yes, you can solder. I have soldered cells so many times. Some of my packs are over 10 years old with never a failure from soldering. Um, the reason why manufacturers don't solder is it's slow. It's tedious and slow and takes forever. Um, you will read people say that um yeah if you put too much heat into them you could fry the cell well you really you really have to bake the cell you're not going to bake it by soldering unless you're if it's if the soldering solder isn't flowing and not sticking stop let it cool down try again pretty simple take some flux this is rosin core solder i like to add a little bit of my of my own electrical flux just because i think it helps flow out the solder a little bit better um we'll take my soldering iron uh you can you can get a soldering iron for ten dollars it will do this even cheaper seven bucks from amazon something like that and i'm just going to this is called tinning i can watch the solder the solder float out that's all i need done these battery packs will get hotter just in use than me doing this. I mean, that's not even warm. Solder melts at, you know, 600, 700 degrees, 900 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, if you want to be technical, I guess spot welding is 2,000 plus degrees. So then we'll take my tab and make sure I got it aligned which way I want it. I might, sometimes adding more solder helps it flow out faster. We'll just dab a little bit. And if you put on too much solder and you got too big of a glob, guess what? You can just sand it off or melt it off. Get that to set flat. Need it to go all the way flat. Kind of, we have space requirements in these battery packs. There you go. It melted. So I'm going to show you guys the how to use copper wire instead of um, these little strips. They didn't give me enough in the kit. Didn't think they did. Um, I need to connect all these together. Doesn't matter where. So just got a copper wire. I'll cut it to length here in a minute. But what I want to do is just flatten it out. So I just strip back about an inch or so. Doesn't matter how much. Um, and the sheathing is just holding it together so it doesn't just go everywhere. And you can see this is 16 gauge wire. And it's about the same as these strips and it's copper. It'll conduct way better. So we'll just put a little bit of flux on the wire, get our soldering iron ready. So you want your soldering iron as hot as possible. Um, not to put heat in there, but 
so you can get in get out and so I'll just lay this down I've pre-tinned it and I got a little ball of solder there and we'll just let it flow through let it cool down for a second I got one or two strands not connected in we'll come back and spread the solder out just a little bit maybe I'll add a little bit of solder to there just to get enough to flow it out and stick all my pieces there we go easy enough now I can just measure the length I want if this needs to run up to like my charge one of my charge ports or something I can as well and so this looks about adequate and now I can just pull off the rest of the the sheathing see I'll pull some back for a minute lay it flat again do the next one the next one just bend it do the next one and you're done there you go that's what it looks like copper wire we're getting there we're almost done it's all together and I've tested voltage there's really not that complicated so you got your positive right here that would go out to your tool that comes through positive to negative just touches the negative to positive the negative so if you touch here this side and this side you get 12 volts so you touch here's my negative there's my positive 12 and a half volts now all these battery circuit boards are going to be pretty basic this one actually says b negative right here b positive right there and then we have a 4 volt 8 volt i'll show you where those go those just so a lead will just go from here to here and a lead will go from here down to here just to balance the uh, the voltage in each set of cells that's part of lithium thing but now I'm just gonna solder some wire from from here to go up to my negative and then I'll have to run a lead from here down the back all the way down to my positive down here so just doing our we got the negative which was just the top of this battery and then the positive goes right here and so we have to run a, a uh, wire up and so wherever the problem is, is on these 18650s, the entire outside is negative. So this is negative under a thin little sheath. So you want to put electrical tape or anything else around there. Uh, I'm crossing over a negative terminal right here. I'll put double electrical tape, leave the insulation on. I'll come down to here, and then I'll just cut it and solder it right to here. There we go. All done. No, nope, it's not super pretty, but it's functional and works, and it's on the inside, and you'll never see it. And they're all free batteries. So you see the green and the white lead. So white lead comes down, monitors the voltage here. The green lead comes over here and measures the voltage between here and here to charge this pack. And then the white lead also goes from here, which mounts to here, that matters, that monitors the voltage between this little pack. So we're all done. Voltage is all test out perfect. Let's um, put together, put a collar on. Put the base on. It all fits together. Let's uh, test it out. That works. Put it on the charger. It might be too full right now to charge. Yeah, so it's fully charged. So where do I get all these cells for free? The recycle places. The um, retail stores that actually recycle these, they have usually bins. Uh, generally, if you talk to a manager or something, they'll say, yeah, go ahead, take them. They don't want you kind of like just scrummaging around and bumming around and constantly taking stuff. But if you ask them, generally, and they're nice, they'll let you. They're just going to, essentially, they're getting thrown away, recycled, but they're getting thrown away. So this is me going out maybe 10 times, 10 different stores, um, same store a couple times. Um, but... 10 different times and I ended up with this and a bunch of laptop batteries as well. The laptop batteries, honestly, when those die, those are pretty much toast and they're not high drain cells and so they don't work good for power tools at all. So kind of stay away from them. Um, these things, anything that was a power tool battery itself at one point will work amazing. These ones, I mean, here's a Ryobi battery that actually there was nothing wrong with it. It actually worked. So why somebody's getting rid of it maybe their charger was bad or maybe they just got rid of the tool and decided 
drop off their battery to be recycled. Who knows? Um, here's three DeWalt batteries that I picked up. That These are those super cheap Chinese ones you'll see on Amazon and stuff. Stay away from them. They're just garbage. No, the, I took three and I was able to salvage some cells from one of them and kind of make these work. But the cells in these are so cheaply made. They're just, they're just waiting for, they're waiting for death. But these other things, a lot of the other packs that you get, you know, here's an iRobot, there's a Dyson, they'll have name brand cells. You have some Sanyo, some uh, LG, some Samsung, and honestly, I guess, you know, when these do finally crap out, they're pretty not, not good for anything but like a fan or a flashlight. Uh, it can actually have a case and there's a circuit board in there. It can actually rebuild it with actually some good cells out of something else and put them together. I have the case for them, but um, there you go. That's where you get them. That's how you get free batteries. Just get off your butt, get out there, and it's fun. Make your own battery packs. Make them as big as you want. What do you think? You want to run? Okay, go ahead and run. Go for it. Yeah. day at work.